Thank you for staying with us. President Bola Tinubu has urged protesters to end their nationwide demonstrations as tension rise across the country. The protests, which began last week, has seen thousands take to the streets to express their discontent with government's handling of various issues. In a televised address, President Tinubu acknowledged the concerns of the protesters and promised to address their grievances. I have heard you loud and clear. I understand the pain and the frustration that drive this protest. And I want to assure you that our government is committed to listening and addressing the our citizens. But we must not let violence and destruction tear our nation apart. We must work together to build a brighter future where every Nigerian can live with dignity and prosperity. However, the president also warned that the continued protest is taking a toll on the economy and the daily lives of Nigerians. I have enjoyed protesters and the organizers to suspend any further protest and create room for dialogue, which I have always acceded to at the slightest opportunity. Nigeria requires all hands on deck and it owes all, regardless of age, party, religion, or other divides, to work together, reshaping our destiny as a nation. Well, joining us via Zoom from the United States of America to discuss this development is the convener social rehabilitation, grace and support initiative, Dr. Oludari Marindotti. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Good morning, Veronica. Good morning to you. Thanks for having me. Nigerians wanted the president to speak, and now he has spoken. Uh, there's been divergent reaction to what he said in his address, but let's get your perception of the president's speech. Uh, thank you very much. You know, to me, I just analyzed the speech briefly. The president, you know, he, uh, he stood for peace and joined the, the protesters to suspend the protest. You know, he acknowledged the frustrations. Most importantly, condemned all forms of you know ethnic bigotry as he should do. He rejected the remove uh, the return of subsidy and he tried to you know talk about the progresses or the plans that they have made. Uh, the most important thing to me, because I've been always talking about this food security thing, was the fact that the president said that this is suspension of import duties for six months in the first instance. That is to say, they are not just going to automatically yank it out. They will see if taking it out will, I mean, bringing back the uh, subsidy, I mean, the import duty will increase the price and they will review at that point. So to me, the president's speech, you know, just like B.B. King, King Sonia Day, or gentleman Mike Jaga, the president struck all the right notes, and then he gave us both at the end of it. So it was, you know, to me, it was uh, reassuring. That's what you expect of a leader. Now, do I expect this to be enough for the protesters? I, you know, to me, I don't think it will be enough because of, you know, my generation. I have always believed that we suffer from this population-wide attention deficit disorder, whereby we do not imbibe, we just want to vibe. So things that... We don't. We can't explain in 15 seconds. We you lose most people in my generation. That's just who we are. We have to just face the reality, and that's why I feel like we have to keep on, you know, finding the best ways to talk to people in my generation, especially about this subsidy thing that they are suing for. Because in my own opinion, I believe protest for hunger is very valid. You know my position on hunger and food importation all along. But protest for subsidy removal, people who are protesting for subsidy removal are just being useful idiots to the subsidy cabal. Your choice of words, please. I'm sorry I knew you were going to come, uh, recall, you know, caution me on that. So I'm sorry I have to use that word. But that is just the fact because... When there are you other words you can use. use there are other words you can I'm sorry, use. That's why, right. I, that's, why I'm not going to, that's why I'm not going to repeat it again. Yes, but, but when you look at it, the people don't use this uh, words because the people that use these things more are the rich. When you talk of dollars, 
the, the, the arbitrage is not just direct arbitrage. If you were able to find a way, maybe through connection, to get dollar at the official rate and use it to import something, you are not going to calculate your cost price at that official rate. That is also a form of arbitrage. The rich are the ones, as a matter of fact, I believe the administration can release the data of all the official exchange rates uh, dollar sold below $4,000. The average Nigerian, 70% of Nigerians don't make $4,000 a year. Let us know how much in summation and compare it to the other bigger ones. You will see that majority of this dollar is being bought by the rich. So if I want to subsidize, let me say, NSC, and you don't drink NSC, is that subsidy for you? The subsidy is for the rich. It is the same thing with well. Well is food is I mean, well is used by machines. It is the rich men that have more of the machines. So they are the ones that benefit apart from even the subsidy, the scandal. But the subsidy that I think the people need to sue for is subsidy on food. Because food is well for human beings. We metabolize it and get its ATP, which is a form of energy. So when we look when we look at it, food is also an hydrocarbon. So the government can subsidize food. And then in the long run, you know, all this uh, growth that we are starting to see, the people will not be feeling it yet. But in the long run, it will materialize. So I am happy that the president stood its ground on the return of subsidy. I still don't feel that by the number subsidy on fuel is being, uh, has been taken away just by the numbers. But I feel like it is the subsidy on foreign exchange that is impacting the majority of these things. And like you said, by the time we start cultivating food, now, dollar is already expensive. So imported food will just be bad business. People will buy Nigerian food by default because it will be cheaper. So I am happy, but I don't think this protest is going to, this is going to calm the nerves of a lot of people who are protesting. I feel like we just need to talk in simple terms. I mean, I also analyzed the, what's it called, the statements uh, in, the, in the speech which I feel like the communication team of the president also need to improve their delivery because, you know, the president has been a noose around the jugular of our economy. So I just thought to call a few of my friends. I called three. They didn't know the meaning of noose. And then I thought again, I called them back. I thought, what's the, what's the jugular? One of them thought it, thought it was, you know, balls. So, you know, when you, think, when you look at it, so that means if you are saying a noose around the jugular, you are not talking to the Nigerian audience. So we need to use simple, digestible terms in explaining these policies because, guess what? President Bola Tinubu cannot build Nigeria. It is Nigerians that will build Nigeria. He can create an enabling environment for Nigerians, you and me, to build this country. But he cannot do it by himself. He is just one man. Mm, okay. you know? So, exactly. So we need to convince our people, let them know that this subsidy must not come back. Otherwise, the government is going to be using your money to subsidize the rich people. And then your education will be broke, your hospitals will be broke, your roads will be bad, because the money that should be spent on you, for you to have a better life, is being spent on the rich. That is why you see that Dangotes and all the rich people, their value came down just within a year, because this money that the government would have been using to prop them up, they stopped giving it to them. Okay. Bola Tinubu himself, his, the value of his money has dropped because of this policy. This, this is why I feel he has also sacrificed, because but, he decided to reduce the value of his own wealth. But if you're, if, you're, if, you're, if you're talking in this term right now, um, it's also for the for the not so haves, not the people that do not have, if, he's, if you think he's subsidizing the, 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 the rich, and and the and the, the subsidizing fuel and the rich are the ones um, benefiting from it. Won't it be the same thing if it's to subsidize food? Because you mentioned that earlier that rather than subsidize fuel, let him subsidize food. Won't it be the same thing? Not at all. Because guess what? Dangote can buy the dollars that one hundred million Nigerians cannot afford. They don't make money to buy. Dangote can buy the fuel, and I'm just using Dangote. I don't have anything against him because he's just the richest man. Dangote can buy the fuel. He's not like he buys, they can buy the fuel. He uses right now the fuel per minute that millions of Nigerians cannot use. But Dangote can only eat the food of one man. He might not even be able to eat as much as you, Theophilus, because I think you have a very large appetite. I'm just joking. <laughs> so, so that is why you can subsidize food, and that will be subsidy for all of us, as opposed to just 
focusing it on just the subsidy for poor. The reason why the people are suffering is understandable. It is because the impact is going to be regressive. Think about it. If I have one million era and you have one thousand era, and we are both told to donate fifty percent of our work to the Nigerian government. I would have donated 500,000 naira. You would have donated 500 naira. That is a thousand times more than you have donated, and even 500 times what? But the problem is that with the 500 naira that is left in your hand, you may not be able to eat a plate of rice. But me, with 500,000 naira, I will still dorime. So, in terms of the impact, I understand the people suffering. Which is why I have been an advocate of, which is why it is so depressing to me when, you know, the old scandal with the humanitarian uh, department occurred and I was on this channel also talking about it because this is the most important time when you would have needed that to be a stop gap pending the time that the natural growth will occur and the people will start having, a, you know, a, an easier lease to life. We need to ensure that we get Nigerians on board with especially this subsidy removal. This is a scam as old as time in Nigeria. Even the current MBA of uh, Kano said it. He said even when we were saying, I didn't know this, I heard it in one of his speeches, that even when we were saying one naira was one dollar, at parallel market rate, that it was one naira to like 300, I mean, one naira to like four dollars. I mean, sorry, one dollar to like four naira as in parallel market, so that the spread was about 300%. And who are the people using all these things? It is the rich. And all right. the government, and it is illegal. If the politician steals your money, you can go after them. If a rich man buys the dollar, you can't go after him because it is illegal. And the government has just given All right, Dr. Mario Dutty, um, we need to make judicious use of our time because there's so much that has to be said with regards to this speech. Now, you mentioned earlier that there is the need to bring Nigerians on board. The reason why the fuel subsidy uh, was removed in the first place so that they can embrace it. And the president has said that they are open to dialogue. The federal government is open to dialogue. Even some state governments or governors are saying they are also open to dialogue, for instance, Lagos State. How then can the government be strategic enough in its uh, conversation around not just the fuel subsidy, but also about programs it has put in place for the benefit of the people? Because most people seem to not know what government is doing because not much is being said about it. Yeah, to be strategically, the first thing first is to ensure that the people do not go hungry. As a Yoruba boy, they say, you know, they be back to war or merely war. That is to say, when hunger enters your stomach, enters your mind, no other message can enter it. So once you let the people eat, and this is why I've been talking about this thing, I just, I went to check again, it was June 4, 2023, that I was talking about food protectionism. So that when you can first let people eat, because even if you look at the hierarchy of needs, physiological needs, food, it is the number one. If you hear that there is a threat somewhere, but you have not eaten, you will still go out and eat before you run back home to run away from the threat. So once you ensure that the people can eat first, then you have to persistently be going on every form of media to encourage the people, to educate the people. And, you know, like you said, the state governor, some people are stepping up, but some are not stepping up. There was a governor, and I'll try not to mention him for the Nigerian factor, that said, I understand your problem. I will take it to the president. And I'm like, are you not the leader of the states? Why do you want to take their problems if you understand it to the president? Why can't you stop, solve it? Yes, the box stops at his desk, but before the box stops, it must have been adequately passed around. You don't just push the box straight up. This is why I feel like, just like my heroes from Mundo State, people like Papa Shonoti and His Royal Majesty Lufalai has advised the president, they should begin restructuring because I think it is strategically important so that, you know, the governors will start, will stop treating the presidents like our father in heaven, allowed with thy name. You know, that king don't come. That will be done in my state as it is in Abuja. Give us this day my daily bread. They should feel like we can stop it. And then they start to earn money. I feel like even the public fund distribution system is also not eff efficient. And these are all the things that a lot of people have worked on. There can be a lot of improvements in. And it will also help us to solve the security problem. Because, you know, I heard about you talk uh, about, you know, the millions of acres that they want to cultivate. But, you know, in a lot of these places, we understand the security challenges. So you might have, you know, exterminated a lot of the bandit leaders and the terrorists and all. But if you take time, 
for you to convince that farmer to have the confidence to go back and sleep on the farm and be there by themselves. So you have to give, the government has to give itself the time to go through growing pains, which is going to be what we are all going to have to go through. Even in the CNG initiative that the president spoke about yesterday, it will also take time. Even if you look at the history of places where they've done it, it probably will take about a decade. It will be in phases. Introduction, introduction phase, you know, the growth phase, you know, the sustainable phase, all those, all those phases you have to go through them gradually. So Nigeria is on the trajectory to economic, astronomical economic growth. But we have to ensure that adequate stock-up in terms of just food alone is given to the public. Nigerians don't demand a lot. They just want to eat food. And if we allow them to eat food, they will give us the time. Government the time. Now, not us, because I'm not a part of the government. But they will give the government the time that they need to complete, complete the procedure that they are carrying out. And then all of us, you and I, will be better for it. You, I will be able to say, I don't want my children to go to school in the United States because the government has stopped giving the rich people like Dangote and then likes money, and they've invested in the, the schools. So our schools, our students right now are having the human capital required to grow economy, to be you know, technicians and lawyers and doctors and all these things, so that we will stop the dependence on you know, expatriates, and we can grow our people. We, can, we need to invest in human capital so, human capital is very essential because guess what? You can sell oil or sell wood, right? You can sell wood and that is it. But if you learn to carve wood, you can carve wood and you will multiply the value of that wood. So that means the human capital of you learning to carve is much more important than just the wood that you can sell to. So if we develop our human capital, if you look at the state of Texas, they made maybe 10 times, I don't even know, more oil than Nigeria. But oil is about just the seventh oil and mining is about the seventh in their you know income duty because human capital things like finance and is in the top four because they are developed human capital. So we need investments and we need to stop subsidy. All right, Dr. Mario Dotti, in all of this that you've mentioned now, what comes to mind is um the, we, we spoke earlier um, about the importance attached to real estate as against farmland in some part of the southwest. Um, do you think that the governors are maybe paying just lip service to um, the issue of farming, farming our own food so that the price of food can go down. Well, I can't really. I mean, I know that in you know, those state government, that's why he's doing an amazing job. He just got in there. There's like a strategy and a long-term plan. But you know, this problem has been a legacy problem, especially in the southwest. We have, you know, we use. <laughs> Sometimes the cultural and then my sister was just six years younger than me. Asked her, they never sang it in a school because you know we are a little bit moving away from our culture. We don't like our language. We call it vernacular and other things. So the culture of farming is leaving us. We need to bring it back because we have the land and we can feed ourselves. For you know the past decade, there have said there have been several instances whereby, for whatever reason, there will be blockade of food coming to the south to the to the south. When we don't have the lateral, lateral, lateral living land like the East, we have fertile arable land that you can cultivate and grow at least enough food so that you don't have to even import from, a, you know, Kutono, or maybe so that you can even export it. And we have a better human capital development in the Southwest compared to everywhere else in the country. So the governors all need to have a strategic, you know, plan that they can have regionally. But that is why I also feel that restructuring will put a lot more focus and responsibilities on the shoulders of the governors, and they will know that they need to make money and they will focus on developing their states because food is being sold. Food is a commodity that you sell for a profit. You need to invest in it, but for a very long time, this problem has existed, and the governors have allowed it. To I, I mean, do we have to restructure for a governor to know that... He has a responsibility to the people when we're talking about the protection of lives and property. We have to restructure for them to know that they have a responsibility of ensuring that their citizens put food on their table. Do we have to restructure for them to know what it is they have to do? At, at some point, the Southwest governors met and said they were going to address this matter of food security. I think that was a month or two ago. We do not know how far they have gone with that conversation as it is. We have experts here who have blamed them 
for paying lip service because they own the lands and know what should be done with this land. You are very right, Brian. We It is so sad. We don't have to restructure for all these things to happen, even though the structure is bad. However, when there is a problem, you have to fix it. When everybody, there is protest for hunger, but a lot of the state governors in their interactions have not taken adequate responsibility for it. You know, because it is easy for them to hide behind their father in Abuja. So it is why I am saying you have to put them on the spotlight. The president needs to shed some load. We don't have to restructure. I had an argument with my sister a while ago about parents not teaching their children the language of their mother tongue, the Yoruba language. And I said the governors have the government have to make it a law that everybody should take Yoruba up until maybe GS3. And then there was an argument. I'm like, well, it is we are the only reason why I'm saying this is because the family is failing in its primary responsibility to ensure transition or transfer of culture and language to the next generation. So the government needs to intervene. So it is because we have seen that the governors have failed over a long period of time in the dissipation of these duties. And I'm saying you need to put a lot more responsibilities on their shoulder so that they don't have a hiding place, so that they can all know that they need to tighten up their belts and maybe lose some weight so that the people can it. And they know that act, the people can easily, eagerly hold them accountable and vote them out in the next four years. So that is the reason why I am using that as a strategic response. But yeah, we shouldn't have to do this. We shouldn't have to do this. We have water in, in, in the southwest. We have, you know, good farmland. We can cultivate from fishery to, I mean, one of my uh, friends, father, who is a professor, told me about agricultural zones in the western region that I will lower add. And these agricultural zones, you know, like you said, they saved the paradise and they put up a parking lot. And now people are, are starving. And I even heard maybe in the battle, they wanted to cancel one of the forestry, you know, forest reserve. Yes, like you said, you mentioned it that time, that we should have forest reserve protected regions, whereby we want to protect, you know, wildlife and, you know, natural and vegetation. And the government, it is also needs to be a part of our long-term strategies. These problems are multi-pronged. You cannot solve them. In, you, it, might, it might even not solve them in the generation, but you can start making you know, significant progress towards passing on to the next generation a better form of Nigeria. So we don't need to, we shouldn't need to restructure, but because the structure has shown us to fail and it is failing, the people are asking for, a end, for an end to bad governance. We can do to bad governance structure so that the security, the people are responsible for it and they'll be able to efficiently monitor and protect themselves because they are neighbors in the same community. And then the governors can make more money and exploit their natural resources to the benefits of their people and the nation at wide, so that we all can form this cohesive unit of people cohabiting like a cell in a structure, so that we can all work together. We need to compartmentalize and restructure and give people more power so that they can do more. We spoke about the minimum wage. I don't believe one man in Abuja should negotiate minimum wage, because living realities in different regions in Nigeria, in different states in Nigeria, right. is not the same. Right. Another issue is the fact that the president told the youth that he has heard them loud and clear, and also advised them to take advantage of uh, the programs put in place by government. But this matter of engaging the youth, um, ensuring that they participate actively in governance how do we go about that because it has always been one of uh, the conversations that have been going on even before this administration came in and when the president came he talked about the youth as well and how he was going to involve them and now he's saying he's heard them loud and clear yeah in terms of uh, engaging the youth you have to speak their language you have to talk in ways they can understand this was something that I I had to learn when I, I dabbled into songwriting and I wrote a song and I showed my friend Danny Young and he laughed at me. He said I should start explaining it. Now that you explain it to me, it makes sense, but people will not get it. So this is nonsense. So I had to re strategize. I learned that thing for the first time then. You have to talk to the people, to the youth in the language and understand. This set of generation right now, we are not as nuanced as our parents. 
So we have to be able to break it down into things that they can relate to. It is your responsibility. If you came to my hospital, God forbid, and I said that I need to do a tumor resection and illegitimate anastomosis, that does not make any sense to you. But if I say I want to take out the bad parts and join the good ones, you understand it. So you need to be able to persistently communicate with the youth in the simple terms. Because definitely, yes, there has been, especially because of social media and internet and all these things, there has been a dumbing down of this generation. And we cannot let it be. We have to find a way to strategically, over the long term, reverse that trend. But we need to talk to them right now in the terms that they can understand. Not just say that this money is there. Oh, are you doing this? You can get funds here. Apply and go on the media platforms that they use. I can assure you that maybe the less than 30% of your viewers right now are going to be under the age of 30. And these are the people that we are making all these plans for. So if we are talking about this on TVC and channels and maybe show where all these places are not just new news channels, the youth are not going to get it. So you have to probably find a way to get it on TikTok and find a way to get on, you know, Snapchat and find a way to get on Instagram, Facebook. That is where they are. That is where you can get them. And then bring them in over time. And then you cannot do the whole long, long term strategy about making people, you know, have more attention and pay more focus on all these things. So that is the way I feel. And I feel like the gov the president's communication team needs to up their game for sure. They didn't do it during the campaign. They have not done it during this election, during this uh, what's it called the governing period because the people still don't understand why subsidy needs to go. They are still advocating for it. And this, so have the conversation with them, have a debate with them. The superior idea will always win. So don't shy away from them. Talk to them. Tolerate them. Tolerate their ignorance. Sometimes I get frustrated that I have to explain so much. But you have to tolerate it. That is what we doctors do. Doctors, you allow them to do the most gory things to you because they explain it to you. And let them, they cut you open, they do anything. But while you are doing that, you have to give them the adequate, the potent an anesthesia, an adequate analgesia, so that the doctor will complete the, pro the procedure. So these are the things that the government needs to do so that we can carry our youth along and let them learn to benefit from these lofty plans. I didn't even know about as much. I mean, I need it a whole lot, but there were a few that the government, the president was just mentioning yesterday. So why is the plan there and nobody knows about it? It is as good as the plan not being there. Because the plan is not for the president or the administration, it's for the youth. Do Dr. So Marin Dotti, is it about the president or the, go the government agencies um, talking to the youth in the language you understand, or are you not interested? Because some of these government agencies are on Instagram, they are on TikTok, they are on Facebook. Is that not enough? I mean, we have people following them to get this information. It is not enough because you have to, you know, uh, learn to deliver it in the way that they can digest. Okay. So if an 80-year-old, if a 50-year-old, 60-year-old man is on TikTok, he does not know what to do. You know, Kamala Harris, I was watching it when she had the uh, failed presidential run in 2020. Our uh, social media address strategist was a 19-year-old girl. Mm. They, that is, they know how to do it. So you use them and you pay them and they get your message out to those people. And you know, have this conversation. So yes, it is the duty of the presidency and the government agencies and everybody, all hands on deck. Like the president said, we need everybody, all hands to be on deck to lift, to, you know, to lift Nigeria forward. But everybody needs to do it, and you need to involve the youth in spreading these messages so that they can learn to benefit from it and ensure that they don't have a bad experience when they mm -hmm. attempt to. You know, exploit this thing or take advantage of these uh, programs because there are sometimes whereby bureaucracy, corruption, people asking for bribes. You can prevent it. You can prevent it. You can you can prevent it with so many strategies. So once you ensure that, then you can go and take advantage of it. Right. Um. Right. Quickly before we let you go, Dr. Marion Dotti. Earlier on, you said that uh, some of the measures being put in place by this government may not even happen in this generation, but um, structures have to be put in place. But how much longer? These persons seem impatient as it is. They want something that would happen as quickly as possible for them. How much longer uh, do you think they should give the government uh, as we speak? 
Yeah, you know, the, 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 the government, so far, they let them, they'll give the government time and the government will go through going for I understand that, you know, mother would, you may not want to go through nine months gestation period, but there has to be a gestation period. If you want to build the adequate amount of roads for our population, you want the people to have human capital development, it will take time. You can, if you go to medical school, it will take you six years in Nigeria to become a doctor. So you want to increase the number of doctors. You have to know that even if President Tinubu, like they said, they've increased the number of medical students that they are admitted right now, which stopped two years after I got into medical school, it will still take six years before those ones graduate medical school. And after that, they will now have to go into residency before they can become the specialists that we need. So right. you can see that it will just take time. So we, there's nothing we can do. We just have to encourage them, give them the food they need, and then they will let us get to where we want to get to over time. Okay. Right. Dr. Oludari Marindoti, Convener Social Rehabilitation, Grace and Support Initiative. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much, Fabian. All right. We take a break now. When we return, we'll bring you the news.